Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to my channel. Did you know that I am gluten free? How do I like it? To be honest, I absolutely hate it. Why? Well, I'm going to tell you right here on Garden Jen's Journey. So, I've been on a gluten-free diet for a little over two months now, so I'm still quite in the beginning of it compared to some other gluten-free veterans who have done it for quite a long time, years and years. Um, but I'm finding that I do not like the gluten-free diet. Why? Because it's so unnatural. And it's very discerning that because of the way that man has messed with the food that the Lord has provided, thinking that they can improve upon what the Lord has already provided, we have poisoned our food and made it where so many people can no longer eat the simple things that were provided to nourish our bodies and so the fact that now I have to stay away from wheat and barley and rye and those gla those grains that contain the uh, proteins that combine to make gluten um, is kind of upsetting and um, you know I'm doing pretty well on the gluten-free diet as far as finding things to to eat in place of the gluten containing grains um, I found a brand that makes wonderful gluten-free bread products um, and I'm just so excited I will put a link in the description box below to the specific brand that I use that for me their bread products don't taste like uh, dried cardboard, <laughs> for lack of a better comparison, because uh, a lot of times when you're buying gluten-free stuff, um, it doesn't taste very good, and the texture is not right. Pastas don't cook quite right compared to the uh, other pastas that uh, we are used to. So it's taken a lot to get used to um, the different gluten-free options, finding different gluten-free options. Not everything that is gluten-free is labeled as gluten-free, so you have to be a label reader. And in doing so, you also have to know what other products or components are made with uh, the gluten-containing grains. So like uh, malt extract, if many people don't know, that's usually made from barley or another grain. Um, and if I remember right, malt extract is like the fermented extract that you uh, get from those grains. So um, if anything has malt extract in it, um, it's definitely not gluten free. Um, so you have to watch those um, when you're label reading and things just because it doesn't have wheat or barley or rye in it you know um, it could have a component in it so you have to be very careful um, I don't have celiac disease I don't have Crohn's um, I don't have some of those other really debilitating and and very serious health conditions where if I eat gluten it's going to really really cause health complications um, I don't have that problem what I have is fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. And I have done everything that I possibly can uh, to manage the symptoms of those uh, conditions. And um, 
the latest step that I took in trying to manage those symptoms was going on a gluten-free diet. Um, like I prefaced before in the beginning, um, I don't believe it that gluten, gluten, or the proteins that combine to create gluten, um, is the problem. It's what we as human beings have done to our food supply. All the pesticides, the herbicides, the hybridization, the GMOs um, are not natural. Um, the, the extreme, I should put it that way, the extreme way that we are um, making hybrids and things like that, trying to improve upon what the Lord has already provided um, really brings some problems to our basic food supply. That's also one of the reasons that I grow heirloom variety uh, fruits and vegetables in my garden and flowers as well as much as possible. Trying to stay with the original as close as I can get to the original plants that the Lord has provided and not all these different hybrids. Um, I know with some vegetables and things like that, people are looking for a specific flavor. Um, with flowers, they're looking for a specific color or, or a leaf pattern or something. And so they're making hybrids trying to achieve those characteristics. And, um, you know, with, with food crops, green crops, um, farmers have been hybridization, using hybridization for many, many years, trying to improve the yield, the pest resistance, and um, uh, just different components within the crop. And I, I can understand that to a point, you know, but um, the nutritional value has really suffered as a result of all this hybridization. And again, that's why I'm going back as as close as possible. Because we, we have to do our best, but you know, you can only do so much um, these days. But going back to the more basic vegetables that have more nutri nutritional value because they have the, the components that came with those instead of being bred out of them because we're looking for a specific color or specific flavor. Um, it's important to me. It's important to me with my health conditions to try to bring as much nutrition back to my food as possible. And so, you know, in my garden, I grow what I can to, to be healthy and full of nutrition for myself and my family. And I have to do that when I go shopping as well. I tend not to eat a bunch of junk food. I mean, I still eat some. I love ice cream. Um, I love chocolate here and there. Um, so I'm not going to lie. I do occasionally eat junk food. I had a bag of chips the other day, you know, but it's in moderation. You know, I realize that I need to eat to live, not live to eat. So I'm careful on what I buy and how many times I indulge in that junk food. Um, but as well, um, I watch the nutritional food that I'm putting on my plate as well. Making sure that, you know, um, I can't afford to buy organic food all the time. We are on a very, very tight budget um, quite a bit of the year as our businesses grow you know it's, it's tight when you first start a your own business um to get it off the ground money is quite tight um so you make the best that you can you do the best choices that you can with what you have and so i'm not buying organic produce all the time but i work with what i can afford so i grow organic produce as much as possible and um you know, it's just going back to the whole, why are we messing with what the Lord's already provided thing? Um, and just taking into consideration that this unfortunately is the way it is. Um, there's people 
who are like myself that can't eat grains because it causes autoimmune flare-ups and there's people who have serious health conditions that can't eat grains there's people who have serious allergic reactions to nuts and nuts are very healthy and they can uh, contribute to quite a few amino acids and uh, omega-3s and things like that I can't remember everything that's in nuts but um you know I have uh, an old school friend her daughter was severely allergic to um, peanuts and tree nuts and just um, if somebody had a peanut butter sandwich or a package of those peanuts that you can get um, for snack packs um, opened up in in the classroom just the microscopic uh, molecules that got into the air could send her into a severe anaphylaxis uh, shock and um, it's sad it's sad because we were given those those things to to eat to nourish our bodies and for some people it's killing them some people it debilitates them and it's sad and I absolutely hate it I'll be so thankful when um, the world is made new again and all these pesticides and herbicides and fungicides and GMOs and all this junk is is gotten rid of and everything is back to the way it started in the beginning full of nutrition and beautiful and we will love the way that it tastes right off the vine so to speak um, it's gonna be beautiful and I can't wait for that day I'm absolutely gonna love that day um, because I hate it right now I hate it that I have to be on this diet that oftentimes gets ridiculed you know where we're crazy or extremists and things like that um, I hate the stigma I hate the arguments um, I hate the divisiveness that uh, being gluten-free or having to be on any form of a radical diet to treat a health problem the flag that you get I absolutely hate it um, I love that I'm starting to feel better I really do I love that my family is is supporting me in this venture and trying to help me uh, make sure that I can get the gluten-free items that I need and that they don't accidentally cross-contaminate my food um, like when we have pizza um, my husband and son have regular pizza made with wheat and um, so they make sure when we cook the pizzas that mine is cooked first and cut first and then theirs will be done as well and um, it's just wonderful that I have the support of my family and some of my friends um, who know that I'm gluten free are trying they're trying to make sure that they remember that oh yeah that's right you you can't have this um, so I won't put it on your plate or I'll make something for you that you can eat you know and uh, it's wonderful to have that support uh, within my uh, immediate family and community but to have the stigma on the outside um, and be ridiculed um, I hate it um, but it is what it is and um, you know I've, I've got to stick to this because I have problems with with uh, the gluten containing products affecting my fibromyalgia so I have to stick with it and uh, I hate that <laughs> I was at um, the farmers market yesterday because I am a vendor there um, as you may or may not know depending on how long you've been following me I make items here on the homestead uh, soaps and lotions and herbal ointments and lip balms and tie-dye t-shirts and there is a link below uh, to my Etsy shop where I sell them online but anyways I was at the farmers market and there's three vendors there who sell homemade baked goods and uh, around noon one o'clock you start getting a little hungry at the farmers market and you start looking around at the 
food vendors that are available there. And the only food vendor I can eat from is the popcorn man. <laughs> because his popcorn's gluten free. But um, we have a young lady who her specialty is sourdough bread. She makes beautiful sourdough. Can't touch it. We have a new vendor this year. She makes beautiful specialty baked goods like croissants and bagels and a few other specialty bakery items. Can't have it. Then we have another lady who makes all sorts of different flavored breads and sweet breads and cookies. Can't have it. But my one friend who is a gluten-free baker, she will be coming back to the farmer's market in a few weeks. And I'll be so thankful because <laughs> I can actually eat her stuff. Um, but when you look around and realize that you're one in a hundred, you know, um, that what you need to have or what you can't have puts you in the minority. And uh, people look at you funny because you're a minority. Um, it's discerning. And I hate that. So being on this gluten-free diet is uh, definitely eye-opening. Um, like I said, I'm feeling better and I'm okay with that. I'm getting creative with what to cook for being gluten-free. I'm okay with that. I just hate all the negativity that comes from being on a gluten-free diet. That's what I really hate. So that's it for this video. <laughs> um, if you can agree with my sentiments or if you understand where I'm coming from, give the video a thumbs up. Share it with other people who might be struggling with being on a gluten-free or other very restrictive diet because of their health conditions. And, uh, and this is part of the journey. If you aren't already, subscribe below so you can stick with me on my journey where I share all sorts of stuff from my health to my garden to my chickens. We got new ducks coming in. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. I'd love to have you along. And I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. So until next time, everybody, take care. Bye-bye.